Okay. Okay. So, um... You guys are heading to the sheriff's, I guess? Wherever the corner is, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's in the basement, so... I figured. Okay. Oh, um, and Elias is missing. Hmm. Yeah, he's disappeared, too. He was still in holding. So... Where, where did he go? Well, I wonder if the monster has the ability to teleport others out as well. Well, and that, yeah. But that's what kind of what I was indicating, but yeah. Alright. Like I said, Frankie, Frankie's concerned that I'm losing losing it, and that this is too much for my well, I don't think losing it is the right word, but uh, making sure, sure. Okay. So, let's do that, and then put that out of our minds. Okay. Or into our minds, if that's the case. Okay. Um. Is there a bell at the at the sheriff's? No. Well, I'm probably. Anyway, it doesn't really -a -ling -a -ling. matter. Olivia's there. Um. Oh, perfect. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Olivia. It's you. Welcome back. Yeah, I heard you lost another uh, prisoner. Just. Victor, nah. that's not helping. No, no. That's not helping. To me. I specifically said I would volunteer my time yeah, okay. to guard these people Victor, and help, and they didn't want any just, help. Hey, um, you can leave. Just no, please, Olivia. I'm sorry. He's going to control himself. It's like, yeah, it's just been it's been a rough morning, and he just got back from a hike. A fruitless hike. Yes, a very fruitless hike. So he's a little cranky. But, um, is there any way that can we, can we, yeah, can can we go talk to the coroner, please? You're kidding, Silas? kidding, right? No, Why I'm do not you, kidding. Are you here to identify a body? Yes, I'm here to identify a body. Okay. Three bodies. Uh, you're friends with, and you're, sorry, your family of the bodies we have in the morgue right now? Is that what you're telling me? Okay. I realize that Victor is, can be very it has nothing to do with and that. abrasive. It has to do with the fact that the people who are coming to see the bodies, to identify the bodies, are the victims' families. And right now, it's not looking too good that Elias is also gone, and these bodies are dead now. These people who were also in you the think cell Eli also. You think Elias did it? Who else would be able to do something like that? That's the work of a crazy uh, person. How did he get out and do this, Olivia? I don't know. You His guys window, had him in a window, holding cell. window is still broken from when you guys broke in. Oh, they know that. What? And uh, was it broken again? The The tarp is gone. We, we had no way of fixing it. We have to wait for a window to get in. And were those two guys in the same cell as Victor? Or as... As uh, yourself? Elias? As Elias? No. They were in a separate cell. Okay, well then your logic doesn't make any sense. How would he get them and what drag it, them out? And what is your logic in the situation? They just... Well, that's between me and the sheriff. A magician came in? Can we can we talk to the sheriff? Please? Is he back? Yes, I mean, as soon that would be okay. Okay, well, maybe instead of seeing Silas, we can talk to the sheriff. We're the ones that found the bodies. It's like we, yeah, well, not we, yeah, we called the police. So could you please let us speak to the sheriff? Sure. 
Yeah, you are not helping the situation, Victor. <laughs> she started it. Okay, calm. It's like calm down. And was there no common sense in this? Town? Okay, again, that's we can't come in hot. It's like okay, we are. I, I'm There's here to find. I'm here missing. to find answers. Not for you to they start. Save them. Okay, I understand that. I don't understand how this happened, but it's like we can't be blaming them. They're not. Yeah, yeah this is how the relationship between police and regular folk goes down the drains. It's like, just calm down. Well, they just need to do their jobs. Okay. It's like, he'll be here soon. It's fine. Just don't, please don't talk to Olivia. I think I'm uh, going to ask her out. <laughs> of course she would. <laughs> she uh, brings the sheriff back up front. It's, these people are here to see Tension's you. It's hot. All right. You can stand down. It's fine. Um, come to my office. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Uh-huh. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. I picture Maxine just, like, shoving Victor down the hallway. I feel like that's pretty much him what's happening. Him making kissy faces to Olivia as he walks by. Um, so what um, what can I do for you? Well, Maxine here has got a couple theories, and we wanted to run them by you and actually check uh, check on the actual physical bodies of these guys. Um, so we were hoping you could help us, so we could, you know, allay any concerns or put those to rest, so we can focus on what's actually happening. I just. I I need I need to see these these bodies not for anything creepy or gross or anything but it's like I just need to I need to make sure that okay again this is going to sound crazy it's like I want to make sure that we're not dreaming that we're not it, that it isn't an illusion or something because it's like it doesn't make sense Frankie said that you told them that that there's time missing yeah from your hour. video and but but yet you you brought food into these guys you thought they were there but they're not there i i just need to wrap my mind around this and it's like i feel like if i see the bodies make sure they're real i i don't know um sure i guess uh I know you're busy. I know you're so busy with this, but it's like, please, just. I need to. Find out what's real. Okay, sure. Let's go find out what's real for you. Uh, we follow him. Yeah. He leads you down to the basement. Um. Silas is no longer here. He's done his examinations already. Um, feel free to do what you need to do. Please do not touch the bodies. Okay. Are you pl are you planning on touching the bodies? Was that your plan? Yes, even if it's with a stick. <laughs> Why? No, personally, hearing her specifically say she doesn't want to do anything inappropriate made me suspicious. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to. It's like it's, it's not just being like I'm, a, I'm not a creep. I'm not a creeper, is what I'm saying. It's just I want. It's That's like, what a creeper would say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Shut up, you two idiots. <laughs> like it's like I just want to touch it. Yeah. No, it's if like you wait outside. I'll be just a minute. Yeah. I'll just be a minute. I'm putting on some lipstick. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's like I'm getting Victor to come over with me. So it, all three of them are there. Uh, well, there's two on the tables. Right. Okay, and then. Do they have one of those drawers? I don't know if they'd have a drawer. 
Yes, I said in the last episode they had drawers. Okay. All right, well, these look pretty real to me. And Victor just quickly touches it without the sheriff seeing. Yeah, it's real. He touches it, it's real, yes? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, well, that confirms our suspicions. Uh, now we the know. The sheriff goes into the office real quick. Touch, 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 yeah. touch, touch. Yeah. All right. Can we can we examine anything or no? I don't think we have no. that ability. Okay, calm down. No. You are not legally supposed to be here. Okay, calm down. I'm just I'm talking about if we see anything odd, but besides like either freezing, but she didn't they didn't do that. They just ripped him open, right? Uh well so here is you have the ability you can investigate here can i investigate maxine roll your dice there's investigate uh okay here's what you have uh he comes back out all right so uh he has a folder Okay. Cause of death, ensanguination due to severe lacerations and trauma. The body of Mark Hiller was discovered on his hunting blind in a remote area in Glacier Ridge. Prominently dispa displayed as if stage, examination revealed extensive injuries across the torso, limbs, and face. Most notably, wounds were deep lacerations consistent with flaying, particularly on the back where the skin had been systematically peeled away. The injuries were jagged and irregular, suggesting a sharp, serrated instrument. Additionally, the victim showed signs of severe frostbite, particularly on the oh, extremities, okay. indicating prolonged exposure, exposure to cold temperatures prior to death. The victim's chest cavity was exposed with severe damage to internal organs, contributing to exsanguination. The positioning of the body suggests deliberate placement, possibly for maximum visibility or as a message. There were no signs of defensive wounds, indicating the victim was likely incapacitated or surprised by the assailant. The scene showed no presence of discernible weapon or assailant, leading to speculation of supernatural involvement. And then there is, Jacob, uh, exsanguination. Just one sec, one sec. We we uh, don't eat both of them, right? Because it'd be both the same. I'm assuming, correct? No, um, maybe it's not. Is uh, there anything different about? No, they're the same. Okay. All right. Uh, did you notice the one thing there, Sheriff? About prolonged exposure to the elements. That window was very small, right? We're both aware that this is a cold creature, correct? Yeah, no, when I they just, touch it. Yeah, I didn't need up. you to tell me this. He knows. He knows the same as us. Mm. Okay. He has a conclusion. So, the deaths of Mark Hiller and Jacob Gillum are highly unusual and warrant further investigation. Did you say Hillam bottom. and Gillum? Hiller and Gillum. Oh, Hiller. Okay, never mind. The body and Geller. The body's placements on the hunting blinds with injuries consistent with flaying and signs of severe frostbite suggests a deliberate and possible ritualistic aspect of to the killings. This conclusion is going to be tossed, and we are going to have to try and cover this again. So you guys good? Is this all you needed? Are we happy now? Yes, this is, uh, thank you, you've been uh, very accommodating. Um, I will tell you this, we have some equipment coming. Um, hopefully we'll be here by Monday, and uh, we're hoping to maybe trap or get rid of this thing. I don't know what we're going to try and do. Uh, if you want to be involved or if you want to be kept in the loop, just let me know. Fine, just do what you need to do. End this quickly. That's what we. That's what we thought too. That's what we're hoping. Okay, uh, one more thing. Um, I talked to Vicky just before I came here, and 
Frankie and I were talking earlier and we were just wondering, I know you told Frankie about different ones that, that, uh, that were there were there were different incidents that happened uh, end of last year and the beginning of this year. But we were just wondering if there was anything in the past years of missing people where people just disappeared or were missing. Like if we could do some research on that or like what? Like missing person reports from the last five, six years. You guys are asking quite a bit. You realize that this is still a police station, correct? Yeah. And this is not that, information it... that you should have access to. We're keeping quiet with the other stuff, Sheriff. We're not trying to... I understand to... that, but there comes a point where it has to call it, you know? Don't you report Sheriff, missing people? Sheriff, missing person reports are public knowledge so are that they? the public looks for missing persons. I mean, yeah, sure. Surely so you have a board to somewhere? We just need to be... Perfect, that's, that's all we it? needed to know. Okay, thank yeah, you. You don't need the reports because that sort of information is confidential. Like, no, oh, no, no. they were and last that's, seen and that's... wearing this... Inf like, there's certain information that you keep back so that you can find out if it's... The person who did it you know yeah and i totally get that i wasn't trying to get you to divulge any i was just looking for names or people that had disappeared so that we could do extra research on our own and see if there's anything around that particular time that was odd that happened that's all that i was asking for i'm not trying to get you to divulge anything more and like you told frankie we're we're not trying to broadcast so to scare the town like we we are going to tell the story but not not speaking in of a which, way that's going to scare everybody i have to set something up for later so uh i have things to do you guys can be on your way all right thank you thanks sheriff okay maybe i am going crazy then well, at the very least, you ruled it out, so... Yeah, that's true. All right, just... Frankie, you and Charlie are headed to the apothecary? <laughs> yes. Oh, Charlie's already there. Uh, so you swing open the door and immediately get hit with, like, that scent whenever you walk by those, like, infuser places in the mall that, like, give you an instant headache. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, they don't give me a headache, but I know what you're talking about. Anyway, that scent. Um, there is things all over the walls talking about, like, um, different, uh, it's very earthly, um, healing remedies, like, uh, Eastern medicine. And there's some, like, Western medicine in here, too, obviously, because there's got to be a pharmacy in town where they can get something. But they definitely try and push more towards the, like, herbal remedies. Um, and standing behind the counter, I'm not sure if you remember her, but I will put a picture in here quickly. Um, is... This lady. Okay. Oh, hello, and welcome. How may I help you? Um. Yes. Um. So, from. Uh, I'm assuming you are Cassandra Blackwood, that's correct? Yes, I run this establishment. How can I help you? Uh, I'm Frankie. Um, this is gonna seem odd, but you are the only surviving Blackwood in town, correct? I am the only Blackwood in town, yes. 
Um, I came across this journal. Um, it's embossed with a name. I was hoping you could help piece things together. It's embossed with E. Blackwood. I mean, it could be anyone, really. There's a lot of E. Blackwoods out there. Why, it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with me. No, I just, just figured I would ask in hopes that there may be any connection. I understand it's not an uncommon name, but... I'm just trying to find the correct owner of the journal, so I'm... I understand. Um, are you wanting my family tree? Um, I just was, I mean, I don't need your entire family tree. Do you know of anyone that would have, is there anyone like recently in your family history that would have been E. Blackwood at all? Um, they would have been into, um, drawing, looking into, um, the supernatural, from what I can tell, from briefly looking at the journal. I mean, that's my entire We're family. We artists. kind of live in that area. Right, of course. That was... Um... Off the top of my head, we have Ethan, not here, probably died long ago. We have Elijah, we have Alara, Elise, and Erica. Um, are any of them still relatively local at all? Or mm. surviving? I mean... Alara and Elijah used to run this shop, but I haven't heard or seen of them in a very long time, so I assume they had passed on. That was... Sorry, that was Elijah and who else? Alara. So I take it you're not here for any remedies to deal with your issues. I mean, I'd love something for the concussion. I just got it on accident because the regular stuff's not really helping. So anything you can recommend for that would be great. Um, I might have something. Might as well since we're here. Frostbite, uh... you need anything while we're in here? She uh, you have anything walks... for frostbite? <laughs> <laughs> she walks away from behind the counter. I'll check in the back. Okay, so she hasn't heard from them. You think they're missing, or they just were like, "I don't want to run the store anymore." Uh, so it didn't sound she walks. Like they'd... Go ahead. I'll, I'll let you guys finish. <laughs> it didn't sound like they left in suspicious circumstances. They were alive when they left, and they used to run the store. You think if they disappeared, she would know? <laughs> they deal with the supernatural. I mean... From what I can tell, I don't know if that's a thing that would bother her like regular folk. But I could be wrong. God, my head is still killing me. Uh. She walks back up to the front. Um, alright. For you with your concussion... 
This is Arnica Montana. It's a plant that has been traditionally used to reduce inflammation and relieve pain associated with injuries, including concussions. Um, you can apply it as a cream or gel. Should be able to help you. Awesome. Additionally, rest, hydration, and avoiding the activities that will worsen symptoms are a good choice as well. Yeah, and for you, uh... here's aloe vera. Enjoy. <laughs> Just what you need, Frostbite. Exactly. Um... <laughs> I hadn't been in here. The store is really cool. How long have you been running it? Mm, ten years. And you haven't heard from the people that ran the store before that whole time? No, I've heard from them, but I haven't heard from them in a while. They could be dead. You don't know. Well, that's true. It's unavoidable. Um. Sorry, writing. Uh. <laughs> My brain's not working. It's fine. It's a symptom of the concussion. What about you, man? You seem to be holding your tongue. Not a lot to say. There's something about you that I don't like. Are you hiding something? I have nothing to hide. Sure. Is that all? Um... I think so, unless you can... recommend anything for my problems. Sorry, I'm trying not to laugh saying that. Because she was like, do you need... I'm assuming you're not here for anything to help with your problems. Maybe try microdosing. Noted. Um, I think, I think that'll be it. At least for right now. Unless I ever have to come back and get this one more aloe vera. I mean, you can get that at any store, but also that'll yeah, be. Yeah, but this store's a little cooler. That'll be thirty dollars for. Me. Hashtag company card. <laughs> Tap that. <laughs> I oh, know it's. I mean, we're the middle of nowhere. It's probably the like dial up where you have to like keep punching the. No, button they still they pretty. still have stuff. They have to like chung ching. Those imprint machines. Um. Okay. What next? Oh. What time is it now? Roughly. Like, in-game? In-game. Uh, I don't know what time it is outside. You're probably looking at about... Uh... Like, one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm gonna... I guess I'll just try and narrow down more of this Blackwood stuff, see if I can 
take some pictures of the notebook and try and make out the dates once I get them uploaded to the computer. Uh, or we could go trudging our close down mill. Do you all want to do that? Sure. Um, so you guys want to meet back up together? Sure. Sure. Hey, Maxine, where are you at? Badoop. <laughs> He's saying he did Badoop. A dupe. <laughs> We're uh, heading back from the sheriff's office. How close is the sheriff's office? It's yeah, about two minutes. Yeah, we'll be there right away. Um, are you back at the lodge? No, we're leaving the apothecary. Um, do you want to go trudge around the mill with? Charlie and I? Yes. We've been wanting to do that for a while. Um. I'll tell you more when we meet up. I'll see you there. Sounds good. Badoop. Alright. So. You head out to the old mill for the first time in 10 episodes when it was brought up <laughs> in the first episode or the second yeah, episode. Eventually. We like to take our time. Don't want to rush into anything. And that's Nothing where we're important. leaving. Um, so... Um, takes you a while to get out there. Uh, it's a little ways out of town, probably about a 30 minute drive. Uh, the path to the old mill is not very well traveled. Um, it's pretty much abandoned, overgrown. Um, and then once you get to it, there's a fence surrounding it just like a chain link that you can climb over. It's not barbed or anything. It's just to keep out wildlife and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, um, I'll hop the fence. You're hopping the fence? I guess I will too. There's no, you said there's no barbed wire on it, right? No. That's what he said. And there's no razor wire either. Okay. <laughs> but it is, but I it is electrified. Uh, <laughs> Electri yeah, it's electrified. You take two harm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it and do that scene from Jurassic Park. <laughs> Her hair's all poofy. We're shot feet away from the fence. <laughs> no, the one where they're like, well, I guess that means the fence is off, and he grabs it and he freaks out and scares the kids. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and he just kind of stops and looks at them and smiles. That in the, the new, new one? Doctor. No, that was the first one. Oh. I'm not mad. To, I haven't to seen get it the in a kids, while. To get the kids to climb, he's like, "Look, it's off!" Like, but he teases them first. But then the kid gets zotted. <laughs> Foreshadowing at its finest. Yeah. All right. So, as you guys are approaching the old mill, a foreboding sense of foreboding settles over you guys kind of like you feel very heavy this is a giant massive building and it's makes you you guys pale in comparison however it's 
appearance has definitely been weathered and scarred over the years. The wooden beams creak in the breeze as if saying, like, whispering to you. Um, the air is very thick, and the sound is only broken by uh, rustling leaves. Um, sorry, the silence is only broken by the sound of rustling leaves, and occasionally you'll hear an owl off in the distance. You get... Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for the foley work. Um, the wind is, like, cutting through the warm clothing that you're wearing. It's very chilly. Not in the sense of, like, polar shadow stalker chilly, but in the sense of, like, it's cold. It um, the surrounding trees are casting, like, long shadows that are dancing with the wind blowing them around. And it's creating these interesting figures on the walls of the mill. Um, as you step across the threshold, I assume you guys are going in, correct? Yeah. So as you step across the threshold of the old mill, a sense of unease washes over you, um, like a wave crashing. Uh, the interior is completely dark. It's only illuminated by pale moonlight and the occasional, like, exit sign that's still illuminated. Um, but other than that, it's dark in here. Um, there's dust that hangs in the air as you, wa like, wave your flashlight around. You catch the particles all moving around, swirling around you. The floorboards, as you walk, are groaning beneath your feet. Um, cobwebs are on every single surface, pretty much. Uh, you see their sh threads shine as you flash your flashlight across them. And the air is very heavy with the scent of mildew and decay, as well as the faint metallic tang of rusted machinery, which is a great smell if you haven't smelled it. It's wonderful to deal with. Um, despite this overwhelming sense of dread that just fills the air, you guys keep going, obviously. I'm assuming. I don't know. Um, the feeling grows as you continue that you're being watched, that unseen eyes are following your every move throughout the shadows. What do you do? Um, I cry. You're gonna cry. <laughs> Maybe just silently weep. You okay? You okay there? Uh... What's Charlie? What's that whimpering noise? <laughs> Did you hear him? It's dark. Nobody can see where it's coming from. <laughs> There's a small uh, puppy in here. So. Oliver said his brother used to live here, or live here, work here, uh, before they shut it down. Um, when it shut down, he started hunting as work. He would hunt um, and sell the furs and the meat and all of that stuff to make a living before he finally decided to just go live out in the woods permanently because he was spending more time out there than in town. But he worked at the mill. But he worked at the old mill, yeah. Um, he was an avid hunter. Um, he said that he went missing late spring, early summer. Or left town. Um, he said that even though he had grown up in town, uh, it and it's a small town, it, uh, it's too loud for him. Um, the town was, the town is too loud? Yeah, the, he said the town was too loud for his brother. Or at least that's what he said when he decided to just live out in the woods. Um, he 
He said he was this same old person, nothing unusual, nothing weird with his behavior or anything leading up to that. This, this... Does anybody Isn't... feel strange in here? Or is it just me? No, we're definitely being watched. Can we investigate here? Sure. What do you want it to do? Investigate, read a bad situation? I'm gonna... How about read a bad situation? Yeah, read a bad situation makes more sense. Or, uh, honestly, both could work. So, if um, one of you wants to do one, one of you I'll wants go. to do the other? Um... Someone else can do the other one, but um, while we're in here, I would like to use my oops again. You... Oops, I did it again. Do this one. Investigate a mystery. How dare you. Trip over a bucket. Two in one episode. What? We're investigating a lot of places. Um... Uh, investigate is sharp. Yeah, both of those are sharp. No, it's so fun. I got a 10. I got okay. 10. On investigate a mystery. So you get to hold two. You can ask the following questions. What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? What is being concealed here? I can ask two? Yep. Okay. Do I want that one and that one? Sure. Yeah. Which one first? This one. So what happened here? No. Oh no. Sorry. Hmm. Sorry. No. It's because my glasses are off. He keeps pointing to this, and it's okay, anyway. What up. sort of? What sort okay, of creature? What sort is of it? creature is it? Yeah. You can't really use that. There's you don't really see a creature here. Okay, well then, what happened here? <laughs> There's here. an owl. <laughs> you, It's an owl. You hear an owl. Um, That's it? What happened here was an owl did no, all this? I'm saying, what what creature was it? it it's an owl. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Um, the thing is, those questions, they still need to make sense for you asking them. They're, like, if there's no creature there, you can't, or you haven't seen a creature, yeah, no, no, no. no point okay. in asking that. Um what happened here um yeah so a that doesn't help uh you haven't really heard a lot about this but there's let's go ahead and go with this there's different like profit reports and like memos and things that are somehow still intact laying around um okay and you can see by just examining some of these things in this head office, um, one of the profit reports are kind of in the final months of working there and slowly but surely things were going down. Um, uh, there was less and less. Um, and then there's a memo or a private email, confidential email that got sent between... Uh, the two head owners of the company um, saying that the quarterly profits are down so bad that they have received an offer from Albatross Industries to buy some of the equipment that is left over in the um, in the shop I guess and then you they also received word from Buchanan Lumberyard that the employees of the mill would be able to start working there instead. So basically, yes, basically what happened is two other industries popped up and this one got pushed out. They weren't able to keep up with their, these titans of industry. So the things that people like that the police came and investigated at the start of our story like that isn't explained by what happened here no 
what happened like this that was before um the they the closed yes and no like there was people walking by and there was lights on in the in here where there wasn't supposed to be lights on so that's why they came and investigated okay so my other question of course is the last one what is being concealed here uh, as you are aware, it feels like you're not alone here, and you hear movement somewhere in the building. But because it's okay. so empty, and there's a lot of metal, and rock, and wood, it echoes quite It just sounds quite like quite it's right. everywhere. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I failed you my failed. roll. I got a six. And what does a fail do for that? One second. And mine was read a bad move. Read a bad situation. Or, right, um, sorry, yeah, sorry. Read a, bad read a bad move. Got it. Um, read a bad move. So that on a fail. Nah, it's good. And then, oops. Oops. <clears throat> so, well, it, it basically, I when you fail or read a bad situation, I'm supposed to ask you questions, and then the monster can act on those answers. But none of the questions really are something that appeals to me right now. So you just failed. All right. All right. I marked it. We got it. All right. So as you guys are exploring. Frankie, being Frankie, goes off on their own. Um, and comes across. I don't know how you guys keep losing them. You guys are all like trying to maintain like a perimeter, and they just happen to walk off. And one of the times you were looking the other way. Mm -hmm. So, Where the heck did Frankie go? Frankie, as you're wandering, you come to a small, like, janitor's closet, and you're like, hey, maybe there'd be a tool in here. And as you open the door, you look inside and just shine your flashlight around a little bit. There's a couple of things in there. Do you want like something out of a janitor's closet or no? Sure. Okay, I'll give you a pipe wrench. Okay, cool. Yeah, it gives pipe you a, gives you another weapon. Um but as you reach in uh and grab it, put it in your backpack or whatever. Uh you come out and close the door and standing behind the door is a figure oh shit and your flashlight goes out and comes back on <clears throat> but something is weird the darkness seems to cling to this man like a shroud obscuring his features in a veil of shadow and he starts approaching in the dim light given off by your flickering flashlight as well as an exit sign behind you that's shining a bright uh, like the bright red i'm gonna slowly just back up and i'm <laughs> the man's form is twisted and contorted as if racked by unseen forces of torment and despair um, his limbs seem slightly elongated more than they should be for a normal person his size um, his movements are very slow and deliberate almost uh, painful but each step having a weightiness to it um, when you see like you kind of start i assume 
a little scary a man walking towards you in a dark hallway a um, yeah. the you know, flashlight shaking you kind of aim it towards his face a little bit and his... are they making any sounds nope Frankie? not really oh i don't know uh, okay i don't know how close i still am to them but probably about I, I would have heard like a oh shit probably about a six foot gap right now um so but you, like i said here? he's walking towards you you can run to her at uh, them i don't care is that what you want to do okay it's fine um yeah i'm, I'm thinking that again wise. it's also echoey in here so that could have come from anywhere um so as um, you flash it towards his face his eyes meet you meet your gaze and it seems like they are devoid of any semblance of humanity. Uh, instead, it reflects kind of an emptiness of a soul consumed by regret and despair. His voice starts to... You can kind of hear like a trembling in his throat before he starts to speak. <clears throat> it carries through the stillness of air, the air like a mournful dirge and it's filled with a sense of sorrow and remorse um, as if he carries the weight of a thousand sins upon his shoulders and the voice I once walked these halls as the harbinger of chaos the embodiment of darkness itself but I was consumed by the shadows, lost to the darkness that now threatens to consume us all. As he speaks, his voice is kind of trembling with emotion. Um, his words are choked with regret. Um, hmm. Uh, roll a, I guess, roll a, uh, investigative mystery. That'd probably be your best bet. Uh, that's an eight on the die. In the Plus one, so that'd be a nine. So you get to ask one question. Okay, um, oh, shit, I didn't pull the card. Oh. I'm going to suggest something, if that's okay with you, but you can choose to ignore it. I would say what sort of creature is it just to identify if you can figure out who this person is. Uh, sure, I'm going to go with that one. I have like an idea in my head of who this is, but I'm going to figure out uh, what kind of creature is it. Uh, so as you are staring at him, his eyes are sunken. His face is kind of weird looking, but there is a familiar resemblance the man you're looking at in front of you right now is Jason Thompson. Of course. And that's where we're going to call tonight's game. <laughs> I try speaking sometimes and it doesn't work. And it didn't work. Anyway, I hope everybody well, enjoyed. Nobody was, nobody was flayed and opened up. Yeah, not yet. Anyway, I hope everybody nice. enjoyed. And uh, we will see you all next week. Questions. Questions. Yep. Did nice we try, uh, conclude the current mystery? No. no. Yes. yes. Did we oh. save someone from certain death or worse? No. Did no. we learn something new and important about the world? I don't think so. And then did we learn something new and important about one of the hunters? Yeah. What's... Conniving, backstabbing, no, never mind. Um, does the fact that Charlie, the apothecary chick thinks Charlie's hiding something count? I was wondering, but oh, okay. not necessarily does that mean it's true. Um, but. Is a weird aura? Probably. Charlie really is a lizard man. Yeah, no, no. See? We knew it. Um, Wyatt. Well, that's not something we just learned. <laughs> Anyway, why so it's, why it's been treat preaching it I, for I don't think you guys are getting any experience this round. 
Uh, I'm only one away from leveling. Sorry, bud. All right. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Night, everybody. Namaste. Namaste away from.